Welcome to Easy Limo Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic, scale drawing. For this particular lesson, we're going to cover something called true bearing. And uh, uh, in the previous lesson, we were able to look at what bearing is, and uh, we were able to highlight two types of bearings. We looked at compass bearing and true bearing. And now for this particular lesson, we're going to look at True bearing. In the previous lesson, we cover majorly. We covered majorly the compass bearing, and for this particular lesson, we'll be covering true bearing. So we have a few questions on true bearing to help us with the illustrations on how to solve problems involving true bearing. And then at the end of the lesson, we'll be having some few questions in the form of assignment to help us with the illustration. I mean, uh, with the uh, Practicing and basically to help gauge your understanding of the concept as we are going to discuss during this lesson. So what is true bearing? It is also called a three-figure bearing, meaning that when the angles are given, remember we talked about bearing in the previous lesson, and you're able to say that bearing is angle measured from the North Pole or from the South Pole in the clockwise direction or in the anti-clockwise direction to a given direction. So when it comes to true bearing, the measurement must start from the North Pole and it is measured in the, in, the, in the clockwise direction to a given direction. But the angle obtained must be written in uh, three figures. So we say it's the, the number of degrees or the angle measured from North Pole, or from the North direction, in the clockwise direction to a given direction. And of course that angle uh, obtained, it has to be in three figures. So if you you obtain an angle like 1, you have to write it as 0, 0, 001 or 8. You know, you have to write it as 0, 0, 008 degrees, 60, 0, 60. Just make sure that they are in uh, th three figures so that if that is not the case, then you add zeros before. Remember, the zeros before do not really count that much if there is no decimal point, you know. So adding that zero does not really make any big difference there in terms of value. So you can write as 008 degrees, 060 degrees, 070 degrees. Now, if it's a number like 100, then you just write 100. If it is 300, you write 300. So when you have something like due north, you'll write it as 000. It means you don't turn. Due north. So we have an example here. So from a point P, the bearing of a house is 60 degrees. So let me do a sketch of that. So you write P. And then you measure. 60 degrees from the North Pole. Remember here the measurement must start from the North Pole. Then you have the point. So you draw that vertical line. And then you draw a horizontal line. So this is the house. Okay. So from a point B, the bearing of a house is 0, 060 degrees. Then from another point Q, mm -hmm. so from another point Q, which is uh, 100 meters due east of P. So east is this side. So you extend towards east. So this is where Q is. So the house is uh, on a bearing of three. The bearing of the house is 300, 300, 300 degrees. So if you join Q to H, 
So this angle here is 300 degrees. Okay. So draw a label sketch, a label sketch to show the positions. So draw a label sketch to show the positions of PQ and the house. And that is how they look like. Or that is how the diagram would look like if you are to draw the sketch. So maybe this line here is 270. So 330, this will be 60 degrees. And of course, this other one is 30 because from north, the angle between the north and the east is 90. So if the other one up there is 60, this one is 30 degrees. And that will make this one here to be 90 degrees. Trying to apply a bit of angle properties. Uh, sum of interior angles in a triangle summing up to 180 degrees. So we have number two is an observer at a port. Observes two steamships approaching the harbor. The first ship appears on a bearing of 100 degrees. So let's have uh, a sketch of the same. Maybe somewhere here. So that is the harbor. And uh, the first one. The first one is appearing on a bearing of 100, 100 degrees. So 100 degrees could be somewhere here because now this is measured from the north pole or from the north direction. So 100 is just slightly above 90 that way. So that is 100 degrees. So this is the first steamship. S1 and uh, so the first uh, ship P oh this is now P so you label it P appears on a bearing of 100 degrees the second Q on a bearing of 20 so 20 is just here okay so this is where Q is Oh, this bearing here is 20 degrees. So the observer estimates the distances of the ships to be 120, the first one. So this is 120 kilometers. And the second one is 80 kilometers from the, from the harbor. So we're supposed to find the distance and bearing of P from Q. So it means we have to draw it to scale. So we start with... So let me start with the harbor here. That is the harbor. So let me use H, H to represent that. Remember to indicate the North Pole. And then now I measure, I will have to measure 120 degrees. from edge, so 120 degrees from edge, so that is there, then you draw, so I'm trying to locate P, so I'll use a scale of one centimeter to represent what? Let me use 20 meters, 20 what? 20 kilometers. So that the 120 kilometers will be equivalent to six centimeters. So you measure six centimeters. So using H as the center in the radius of six centimeters, you draw an arc. So 
So this is where P is. So the distance here is 6 centimeters. But on the actual ground, that is 120 kilometers. Then again, you measure 20 degrees. So 20 degrees. So that's where 20 degrees is. Then now 80 kilometers, you measure 4 centimeters. You divide by 20. So using H as the center, and a radius of 4 centimeters, draw an arc to cut the line. So you draw that. Then now to find the bearing of, uh, so those are the exact positions. So Q is here and P is here. Now to find the exact positions, to find the distance and bearing of Q from P, you join the two points using a straight line. That way. So distance, I will just measure the distance in between. So if you measure the distance in between P and Q in terms of centimeters, it is 7.5. So distance. So distance. Equals to 7.5 centimeters. You multiply by the scale. So that is 150 kilometers. Now bearing. So this is going to be true bearing of Q from, you know, Q from P, so is, this one now, P, this way, so the, the, pro, the protractor should be at P, and the measurement should start from the North Pole, so you measure these all the way up to this, this 180 degrees, so already I have 180 degrees, so of course my protractor can only measure up to a maximum of 180 degrees, but I need to measure up to this line here. So we'll have to use the protractor to measure what is remaining on this side, then I add it to 180. Remember we are measuring from P. So if I do that, what I get so what I'm getting is 153. So 153 degrees Fortunately, this is three fig in three figures, so you don't uh, alter anything. So it remains that way. So that is basically how you do it. We have also a few questions here to help you practice on what you've been learning through this lesson. You can attempt when that can uh, be as soon as possible. Otherwise, that marks the end of the lesson. Till next time. Goodbye.